Hey, what's up, and welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 5, Episode 6. Today we're talking about Leapin' Leprechauns from 1994, directed by Ted Nicolau. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Welcome to The Dumpster. Hi, Sean. In top of the morning oh, to you, top there, of the that morning is. to you, there, Whoa, Joey. It, it's a feeling a little festive in here, wouldn't you say, there? Yeah, I've got my bells on. Ooh, aishy, aishy, aishy. Lucky charms, they're magically delicious. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Austin Powers, obviously. That's the reference. Of they're course. always trying to steal his lucky charms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, exactly. uh... It's our St. Patrick's Day episode. There it is. We've been doing one every year since the second season. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of become a tradition. Yeah, technically, it's the day after St. Patrick's Day, but that's oh. okay because we release on Fridays. Yes, and yes. this time it fell on a Thursday this year, but that's okay because we still got our fucking soda bread. Oh, we got yeah. our, We got our snake bites cooking over here with some Magners and some Guinness. We got Ted Nicolau classic, Moonbeam classic we're talking about today. I cannot believe this is Ted Nicolau. <laughs> that kind of blew my mind, but hey, the director of Terror Vision. Oh, yeah. And many others. Oh, we're going to talk about yeah, Ted a little oh, bit. Yeah, just, yeah. A, just a little bit. But before we get going, I want to say thank you very much to Sean's mother, Mary O'Rourke. She has made this soda bread. Uh, since I've known you, I've eaten yeah. your mother's soda bread every year. And it's delicious. I she love has it. Been killing it. Since, I love it. Uh, as far back as I can remember. So it, thanks, mom. It, it's it's the best soda bread I've ever had. And with that, happy happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, here's to you, Mary. Thank you very much. Mm. Holy shit, it's good. It's so good. <laughs> and you get to uh, watch it being, you know. The bite out of it. Yeah. We'll finish it after the show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's, you know, let's, let's wash that down, <laughs> Joe. With a little uh, snake bite. Okay, let's do it. May the luck of the Irish smile upon you. Oh, now we're talking. Now I'm festive. I don't know about you. I don't know, Joe. I'm like uh, 46% Irish. I know the number <laughs> keeps going up. I check my ancestry account every few months. It's like, oh, you're more Irish, by the way. I'm like, oh, okay. I definitely have a little bit of Irish in there. I think my grandmother on my father's side, my great grandmother on my father's side was English, who might be a little bit Irish. Okay. Or she's British. No, English. Yeah. I mean, my parents, I mean, last name O'Rourke is pretty Irish, but I, I always thought it was funny that my dad had more Italian in him you know. uh, than, than the Irish, but the last name O'Rourke, and my mother's very Irish. Her so grandmother it, came literally off the boat from Ireland. Oh, yeah. Um, hence what I just said, my 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 blood. I'm, I'm, I, I don't live there. I'd love to visit, uh, but I definitely have a connection on some level with, uh, I don't know, my Irish heritage. This isn't some like, luck <laughs> of the Irish. Luck of the Irish. Yeah. Here we go. He's going to go into, yeah, what's my yeah, heritage? I, I appreciate it for what it is. And You're a leprechaun. It's yes, fine. I, I would love to finally sit down and read a book about the Druid people because mm. that's kind of interesting to me, the history of uh, the religion in Ireland. Sure. And, you know, my wife is at home, you know, watching this video in the future, <laughs> you know, strangling me saying, why haven't you read anything about your heritage? Ah, it's uh, okay. But yeah, yeah. So I, so I always love going back to this. Plus it also like... St. Patrick's Day is just so associated with the character on both of our T-shirts for video uh, oh, watchers uh, yeah. and, and for everybody else. Leprechaun. Lubden is a staple of the MDU. Yes. He he was a staple before we even really had him on the show. It was like the Leprechaun jokes were already kind of flying occasionally. Because, yeah. you know, those movies are kind of embedded into both of our lives, I would have to uh, guess. Oh, big time. Knowing each other for a long time with many conversations we've had in the past. Yeah, but even St. Patrick's Day is that we used to get together and watch Leprechaun and drink. Mm. And we yes. still we're still doing it to this day. Uh, we we graduated from the Green Corps Light. <laughs> uh thank you very much. <laughs> uh but yeah, I mean, and then on the show in general, too. Now, again, like we already kind of mentioned that first uh St. Patrick's Day when we covered in the second season, Luck of the Iris, the yeah. Disney Channel original. And then, of course, you got it right we there, got, Joe. We got right here, we got here the, the the a very unlucky leprechaun. This is Warwick Davis after he's already played the evil leprechaun. He's playing a nice leprechaun in a <laughs> Roger Corman production. Lucky, lucky, uh, which spawned uh, the the starfish, which uh, <laughs> we have on set. We have him here. <laughs> uh, this is the this is the shamrock shake. This is what we loan out to McDonald's every year, right? <laughs> he goes. He goes. 
look, we even got look. Thank you, Tony's Dark Nightmares, uh, for this awesome Leprechaun figure, by the way. So, so we got loved in here. So we, we got could the do starfish, this, this example, and, and he and he gives him one of these. <laughs> you gotta be like Daniel Stern, and boys are like, oh, oh, ooga, ooga. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette, and then we take this little guy, yeah. and then we loan him out to McDonald's, and they fucking squeeze that juice out of him, and there you go, Shamrock Shakes, folks. That's how that goes. And we never, ever tell Granny Van Dam about it because she's been looking for that son of a bitch for years. <laughs> By the way, if you're not watching, you can't, if you're not watching on video, a starfish just sucked off a leprechaun. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the advantages of the new format uh, coming into play, <laughs> big time, fast and furiously. Uh, you know, just like uh, that that starfish sucked off loved and fast and furiously. Uh, so the leprechaun lore goes deep on our show. Uh, yes. However, the first episode we ever did. Oh yeah. Was yeah. another Irish classic. Yeah. Rawhead oh. Rex. Yes. The pagan god of dicks. Uh, yeah. Which, which again, I think we even talk about in that episode, Clive Barker wrote the, the original story and was not thrilled with the movie, but it's 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 movie dumpster beginnings, origins, yeah, if you they, will. He signed my poster and he was very nice about it. And okay. uh, yeah, th th yeah, movie dumpster origins. And we're going to be doing a watch along of that uh, this weekend. Yes. On Sunday, the 20th. Be there or be square or not. Be Irish or whatever. Uh, yeah. Come hang out. We're going to have drinks. We're going to have whiskey and Guinness. And uh, we're going to be talking about the Clive Barker classic. We, we're going to have some of that morning dew that we hear about oh, in this film. Oh, the Tullamore dew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, took the words right out of my mouth, Joe. Uh, and that's for 5 and $10 tiers. Yes. So uh, come hang out. Also, don't forget, we got that Leprechaun commentary track coming at you next week. Yes. yes. Yeah. Also for the same tier level. Yes. Uh, definitely check that out again. It's, it's a leprechaun again. I don't want to keep beating beating a dead leprechaun. Uh, we could beat that one from Origins, I guess, to death. <laughs> it's, oh God, would a stick would a fucking uh, yeah. lately. Um, but yeah, the, the leprechaun character is embedded in this show. Like like Lucky the Leprechaun from a very unlucky leprechaun. We we've kind of thrown that loved in theory around a little bit. It came up recently on our yeah. Texas Chainsaw Four episode with Tony from Hack the Movies. He he attributed to the Leatherface kind of theory. <laughs> yeah, that it's 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 different Leatherface every time. Kind it's of a different Leprechaun every time. However, that Lucky is the same Leprechaun at least in Leprechaun One. Yes, I mean, there's a lot of again. You might have to go back in the MD uh, lore book uh, back to that unlucky Leprechaun and the Leprechaun in space episodes to get the full breadth of what we're we're laying down here. Oh, well, now that you say that, we have a handy little MDU reference guide in the show notes of this of this episode, right in the description there. You can see all the timestamps we're talking about this shit, and you can get all those episodes with all that information and the reviews of what we're yes. talking about and, and how we connect these fucking dots of how a leprechaun. <laughs> it's always Warwick Davis, so it kind of already makes sense. Uh, but to get back to this film now, originally. <laughs> When I found this film, because, you know, I, I just every once in a while, I mean, Joe, I'm sure you do this, too. But between actually going through the dungeon and, like, looking at what you got on the shelf and what might work, you know, occasionally we would just look shit up online. I'm like, OK, what would be a good St. Paddy's Day movie? Sure. Now, now going usually into, leprechaun based. Yes. So that was the beginning of my journey on this one. <laughs> and I and I came across Leaping Leprechauns, yeah. not knowing it was already in your collection. Well, we had also discussed um, that other the secret of what is that? The Secret of the Leprechauns right oh, there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. With, uh, with uh, what's his face? Uh, Randy Quaid is right. in that movie? <laughs> of course, uh, and our it's favorite. Like a, it's like a fairy leprechaun war movie or some shit. Maybe next year. It didn't seem as fun as this. No, no, no. But my original thought, just to, just, just to finish the Loveden uh, yeah. uh, point there, yeah. was, well, obviously, much like in Luck of the Irish, they're all more traditional small leather, you know, leather cons, <laughs> leprechauns. Uh, Leather daddy cons. So my, my initial thought was, okay, if I were to MDUize this without actually watching it, are these just his offspring? I don't know if they're his that, that's, It doesn't work when, once you see the film. Well, but right. I don't think they're his offspring. but They as, are related, I think. Well, as luck as the Irish told us, uh, showed us, rather, Henry right. Gibson can be a large man, but also be a leprechaun. And then they can shrink down. True. Remember okay. his mom turns into the leprechaun? She fucking shrinks down, goes into dad's pocket, gives him a fucking <laughs> well, hand job. Yes, yeah. yes, I yep. remember that. However, Warwick Davis leprechaun is kind of in the middle, you yeah. know? He's not he's not like pocket size, but he's not tall. He's kind of, you know, he's a little person. Yes. Uh, and so so that was kind of the antithesis is me trying to combine like reasons to, to lead us to here. But then come to find out that I don't even need to go that crazy with. It. I don't even have to like try to justify the film. We looked up the trailer first fucking second. We see that logo. Joe's like, all right, we're doing it. <laughs> 
Full yeah. moon, baby! I, I the, for, the Moonbeam logo I for, hit! I forgot about this movie <laughs> in the Moonbeam Pantheon. And as soon as the fucking Moonbeam logo came up, I said, I was like, that's it. That's we, it, it, yeah. Case closed. And Ted Nicolau, you get a bonus on that one. Yeah, oh my God. So, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into yes, this. Yes, yes. Um, you want a plot crunch on well, this? Well, let's. Uh, now we've gone. In, let me just want to cap oh, yeah, this yeah, off. Yeah, so, uh, so we talked about full moon uh, and moonbeam in length on the prehistoria three episode. That was our first moonbeam joint. Um, we go into it deep, but the brief summary is Charles Band uh, at the after the fall of Empire created Full Moon Pictures, made a deal with Paramount Pictures, and then created a kid friendly version of Full Moon, which is Moonbeam, and has graced us with things like Leaping Leprechauns and Pet Shop and Prehysteria and the Josh Kirby films, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later. But we also will be doing Patreon exclusive Josh Kirby uh, minisodes. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Uh, com- coming soon, we'll we'll announce that once it's actually happening, but that is 100% on the docket for the near future. Tatro, I promise it's coming. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, but as far as Ted Nicolau goes, you know, we, we had done Terrorvision, which we did with Serge Murillo from uh, Lethian. Yes. Um, go back and check that out. Did an awesome cover of the theme oh song and mixed it with one of his songs, their songs. It was great. Um, but Ted Nicolau is the man behind Terrorvision and uh, Bad Channels and uh, the Subspecies series. And uh, he even did a segment in uh, the Dungeon Master, which he did we a covered. segment in the Dungeon it, Master. It was the uh, like the Mad Max scene. Yeah, he's done quite a scene. I he's done say. quite a few Moonbeam projects too. Um, Leaping Leprechauns is one of them, and its sequel, which we'll talk about. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. But also one of my favorites, Dragon World. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which I really want to circle back to uh, because I love that movie. Mm-hmm. It's great. Um, one of the better uh, uh uh Moonbeam movies for sure. But yeah, so there's your there's your Ted Nicolau Moonbeam minute, because <laughs> uh, you can get all that information again on that Terrorvision episode. We go deep into Ted Nicolau stuff, and on the pre Serie three episode, we go deep into the Moonbeam yeah full moon stuff. Um, but yeah, produced by Charles Band, directed by Ted Nicolau, and uh, this film has a sequel because it was shot back to back called Spellbreaker. What is this, Lord of the Rings? <laughs> it's called Spellbreaker, The Secret of the Leprechauns. And it was shot back to back. Like, everybody comes back for it from this movie, I think. It may, it, with, save for Grant Kramer? I don't know. Maybe I, Grant Kramer. I, I, I feel like that just immediately puts it on a future uh, episode. I don't know, next year or the year after. I feel like it's just an immediate lock. Oh, it's happening. You know, <laughs> yeah, 100%. 100%. We got it. Yeah, yeah. Especially if it's connected. It's kind of like a Guyver 1, Guyver 2 kind of situation. Like, yeah. we, we had to kind of get into both to really get the full breadth oh, of, of the situation. I think it's actually your turn to plot crunch. Would you like to plot crunch this? Or I, I could do it if you I would want love to, to do yeah, it. Uh, you know, to, to explain oh, this Irish... Go ahead, go ahead, uh, me boy. Do it there, Danny. I was going to call it a nightmare, but it really isn't, <laughs> honestly. It really isn't at all. Unlike uh, the Unlucky Leprechaun, which was, a, again, go back and listen to that episode. That was a bit of a nightmare. I can't Quite wait, to, literally, I can't wait I, to watch it again. In yeah. fact, I've already watched it again. You're a saint. <laughs> not not St. Patrick, per se. You didn't chase the snakes or whatever that really means. I've mentioned it in the past. <laughs> Chased uh, all the pagans out of uh, Ireland. Yeah, which they mentioned this movie. I, whatever. Yeah. But anyway, so we get introduced to Mr. Michael Donahue. Uh, who's an older gentleman? Dennehy. Dennehy, excuse me. Uh, who's the Michael old, Dennehy? He, he's like the groundskeeper of this old castle that is also connected to, by happenstance, Leprechaun Land. It's the Fairy Hill, man. Uh, yeah, the Fairy Hill, where there's literally a well that we'll talk about, <laughs> where it goes into their 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 little Hobbit hole world. <laughs> And come to find out his son basically wants to take over the land and replace it with an amusement park called Ireland Land. Um, and just, Ireland Land. He, We'll get to it, uh, but essentially he coaxed his dad to come visit him in America as, as a ploy to get him away from there so he could start his project, but you also have this whole situation where his dad is friends with literal leprechauns and, and fairies that come with him to help him out. Yeah. And you meet his family and kind of you, it's a family you know movie, it's a kid's movie, so there's that element of kids that are upset or not happy and you know, grandpa and leprechauns come in and show him the light. Well, they, show, they get back to their heritage, man. Yes, they do get back into their heritage hardcore, uh, which is basically the movie of, of finding out is is young John. Also being caretakers of the leprechauns. Yes. Is, Question mark. It, caretakers, and is John going to keep this Ireland land idea going? Is he going to put Grandpa in the nut house to I, stake his money? I have a few theories on that when we get to it. Yeah, it, it kind of all comes together at the end there, but that's basically the plot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, Dennehy versus Dennehy. <laughs> So, so we open up and we're on a bus and we're in Ireland. <laughs> you could tell by the music playing, Joe. <laughs> yeah, you know, of course. Um, it's 
It's nice. It's yeah. I don't I don't think it's actually it might be Ireland. I don't think it's Ireland. I think it might be Scotland because they you I think this is this might be the same castle in Dragon World. Oh. I right? think that would line up with the uh the Moonbeam formula. I'm also Save not sure money. because Charles Band his family owns land in Italy and owns a bunch of like castles, huh. which, which is where I'm pretty sure they shot Castle Freak and a bunch of other okay. stuff. Um, so this might be that castle. So it might be Italy and not huh. Ireland or uh, Scotland. I don't know. Double check that for me, will I, you? I, I'm curious about that now. I, he specifically does call a ca- uh, castle Dunsmore. Well, yeah, but. But you're right. Yeah, it's like, in the movie. Yeah, Castle yeah, yeah, Dunsmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would never know. I, no. To me, I hear the music. I see the fucking uh, grass and, and <laughs> you know, they covered in the moss and everything. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's Ireland. It, okay. He's it, talking in an accent from Ro- Ireland. Rolling hills in a castle yeah. in a hole in the ground that has like a mini Stonehenge over it. <laughs> yeah. This thing's been here for 5,000 years. It's, it's really cool, though, because so, so like Sean was saying, this guy, Mike uh, Denny, Mike, Mike or Denny, yeah. you just, like, he, you know, he, he, he runs a tour in Ireland where he takes it. These people come off the bus. And they stop off at Fairy Hill. Right. And, you know, he has this whole uh, story where he leads him over to the to the hole in the ground over the little mini stone hedge. And like, if you listen real closely, you can hear the leprechauns having a fucking party down there. Oh, Jimmy yeah. boy. He has a little boy puts his, you know, ear to the ground. Right. Can He's you like, hear? I can, can you see the fleas, mommy? Can you see the leprechauns? <laughs> he, he definitely listens a little too hard. He gets it. He hears Downworld, <laughs> and he hears Norm fucking uh, uh, uh what's her face? Oh, she's grabbing her bobos. Oh, god, he's grabbing those bobos. Arena. Arena. Oh, and he's like, ah. Uh, well, a uh, little boy, step back a little bit, because you know, obviously, Norm from a gnome named Norm built these fucking tunnels. Are they all connected? You think? Well, I mean, I know that's kind of a saying in the MDU at this point. Well, obviously, I think literally. I mean, it's the tunnels connected. themselves. Now, let me. Let me ask you a question did norm is this like an abandoned gnome hole <laughs> I right know. that they took over like they're like an invasive species the okay. leprechauns well, okay so just to go off of the by lep- the way sure before we get into this the the fae folk the fairy folk they're not necessarily fairies so we got leprechauns dwarves elves and fairies which in uh, this universe right which is kind of accurate from what i recall no from sure that, well you know, the, folk tale. The, the fae folk are all of those different yeah. beings for sure um, which technically you, a leprechaun is a fairy. Which don't don't make any elf jokes, uh, Joe <laughs> Dobby. I know you're only a half elf, but that's gotta upset you, right? <laughs> no, he's a house elf. He's a slave uh, elf. Oh, you leave oh, poor Dobby out of everything, even <laughs> even the insults. He's not living in a nice little cozy hole in the ground. He's Hell living no. in the fucking castle with the wizards. Oh yeah, he's always got that fucking you know nine millimeter pointed <laughs> at his forehead by one of them. <laughs> Dobby dies and Dobby lives again. Yeah, constantly over and over. It's like it, it's like kill, die, repeat. Oh yeah, the movie. But anyway, um, but yeah, I think you know you're right, Joe. It is all connected again. Maybe there's some MDU madness, you know, that connects this all. But much like we have that running joke where there's the graveyard in the MDU, but yeah. it's like every graveyard yard from every movie or cemetery, however you want to word that. I think it is all connected. You know, maybe there's portals they jump through. I, I I swear to God, the Mario Brothers movie happened somewhere in there where Mario's <laughs> spinning through that hellscape <laughs> it's, before it's, he gets into Koopa City definite, 1. It's definitely next door, yeah. right? It's another tunnel adjacent, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like, you know, you hit portals, you know, spiral the fucking dragons in there somewhere even. The I don't un- know. The underground of the MDU is very complex. I mean, yeah. the, okay, so this whole connects- it's like a middle. It's like Middle Earth in and of itself, but it's all tunnels. It kind of, yeah. It's a subterranean uh, landscape of of this universe i would even argue that 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 this leper land of the leprechauns as we find out maybe at some point merge with the uh, middle earth somewhere it's only a portion of it because we got the leprechaun hole this hole is also the well that lucky fucking lives in (laughs) also (laughs) where lubden dies uh, in leprechaun and falls down the fucking hole well i think that was the big bang yeah at at the end of leprechaun (laughs) when he falls down that hole he set the whole thing into motion i think we said the, the the well in Ireland was connected to the well in Minnesota or whatever the fuck yeah, it is in Leprechaun and it right. just goes right through the earth. Exactly. But in the middle of that, the Nexus, P-Head is down there playing poker with fucking Cumdar and Corpse Fucker. You know, the pit is connected somewhere. Yeah. Remember that was involved at one point Again, with the troglodytes. It's, like, it's like the Mortal Kombat thing. Yeah, the pit is in there with yeah. the troglodytes. Yeah, the yeah. trollologs are oh, in yeah, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's like Mortal Kombat where you have all these different tunnels and shit. With all the goo that takes you everywhere. Right, yeah, you gotta take those gyro uh, spears yeah. like we were talking about in Batman Forever. There's the Gnome Kingdom, there's the Leprechaun Kingdom, there's Lubden's fucking hole that he stays in. You know? Oh man, this is like a D&D adventure I want to go on. Yeah, we hell gotta yeah. Get, we gotta get snails, we gotta find those rocks okay. and resurrect them from Dungeons and Dragons. Why haven't we done a campaign like based around the MDU? We should do that. There's Somebody's making us a MDU game, by the way, an RPG 
tabletop RPG. Oh my god! Sign so me up. I don't want to spoil it yet. Who it is or what it is because we're going to announce it when it's finished. But I'm very excited. I, I, th- there's a level for you. Just the <laughs> underground, the underdark, basically oh, of yeah. the MDU. This this, this connecting uh, like ant ant farm kind of situation. So yeah, yeah, le- yeah. Exactly. So is key. So- <laughs> uh, cause we, that whole side tangent there that'll make sense briefly in yeah. a moment. We had to get it all out of the way. Yeah. So so uh, so surveyors come on the land. So that so the tour bus leaves and. Michael Denny, he's walking around and he's like, oh God, I love the fucking, I love these leprechauns. I love my castle. <laughs> my best friends. His castle's gorgeous, by the way. Yeah. I want to live in Castle Dunsmore. He comes across these guys surveying the land and he's like, what the fuck are you doing on my property? And he's they're like, oh, uh, Mr. are you Mr. Denny? And he's like, I... And he's like, well, we're surveying the land. One guy sounds Australian. Uh, he's yeah. like, yeah, well, it's fucking, we're fucking surveying the land. And we, you know, we're going to demolish your castle and build a fucking uh, fairy land. Yeah. Uh, well, Ireland land. Ireland land. Yeah. yeah. We, we uh, also see them get kind of fucked with by the, uh, the leprechauns with their surveyor equipment. Kind of like attacks them. Yeah. So. Because they love mischief. These leprechauns love mischief. Right. Joe. And the big rule in this is you can't see the leprechauns mm. unless you want to see them. Right. So it's not like they're even deceiving anybody. You have to believe in them to see them. It's like a Santa Claus kind of thing. Kind of. Um, so they fuck with these surveyors, and it turns out that he's Michael Dennehy. Well, he's a Dennehy, all right. But the name that's signed on the contract isn't Michael Dennehy. It's John Dennehy, his son from America that used to live in Ireland. The, the, the former, or maybe always, Mike Tobacco. That was his alias. Yeah, I think Mike yeah, exactly. So, from so, Killer Clowns, <laughs> so Grant Kramer. So John Denny, he's played by Grant Kramer in this film. Uh, right, from Killer Clowns. From who Killer plays Clowns the, from Outer Space. The lead in that film, which, yep. hey, maybe maybe look forward to something related to Killer Clowns coming soon uh, that may or may not have been recorded before this, so maybe some of this information might not line up when you see whatever I'm implying. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, yeah, he definitely is the same character. Uh, we, me and Joe were kind of spitballing about this yeah. a little bit earlier, but I think he moved from Ireland. Yes. Much, much as, like, as a boy. Yes. Changed his name, maybe not legally. To So Is Oats. Yeah. Exactly. Obviously, yeah. met Debbie, changed it. He's Mike Tobacco. He's this cool guy. He's got these friends with Terenzi brothers. Yeah, they hang out. They eat ice cream together. Yeah, they they fight the killer clowns. Uh, most of the town's killed. I think that's where he gets his money, honestly, to yeah. make Ireland land. <laughs> People get turned into cotton candy cocoons. I mean, if the whole town's turned into cotton candy and you know that, you're going to go in and like oh, he's looting places. He's looting yeah. everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, yeah. Needs that, he needs capital for Ireland land. Hit him and Dave and Debbie... Loot the town, yeah, and and they and they're all made. They all make them. They give some money to the Torenzis, Obviously, they got to yeah. pay off that car that gets blown. Well, up it's a rental, van. so yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I think what happens is Debbie just. They're already kind of hinting towards it in the movie. Like it's it might go back. It might go this way. She's back with Dave. Oh yeah, she's like, sorry, Mike, you're a great guy, but. Yeah, Dave's Dave's got security. She, yeah, she she goes for stability, not <laughs>, laughs anymore. <laughs> exactly. At first, it was first, you know, she had her fling and it was fun and that was great. And we sat in a raft on the, in the back of the truck and all right. that, and saw the shooting star and shit. But so then he ends. Dave up has with, a pension. Well, and that's kind of pushes Mike to make this island land idea. <laughs> uh, he gets married, has a kid, uh, which you know, a couple kids actually, which we'll get to. Yeah. And uh, but his real name has always been the whole time John Dennehy. Yes, exactly. Same yeah. character. Same guy. He's from Ireland originally, we find out, because uh, he tells Dad, hey, uh, you know, well, that was a big mistake. Don't worry about it. By, oh, by the way, Dad, uh, this isn't convenient at all by, you know, by any stretch of the imagination, but could you uh, come visit for like two weeks? He goes, he, see, he calls because the surveyors called John and they're like, hey, your dad stopped oh, yeah, us yeah. for fucking doing this. So he calls poor Mike. Yeah. And he's like, he's like excited to hear from his son. He, like, this is so like heart wrenching because yeah. like he's so excited to hear from his son and his son's been gone for so long. Yeah. And he's like, oh, honey boy, how, how the fuck are you? I miss you so much. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, hey, dad, listen, uh, what happened today? And he's like, oh, some some people on, on the property, they said they were, you know, your guys. You were going to tear down the fucking castle. And he's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. That That's not going to happen. You know what, dad? Let me tell you something. It's been a long time. I haven't seen you in a long time. Why don't you come to America? I'll pay for it. And he's like, oh, you, oh, oh, for the love of Mike, yeah. I'm going to America. And he's like, yeah, great, Dad. I love you. Bye. Yeah. I mean, meanwhile, then he tells the leprechauns, like, that. you know, they, they have this whole bit where they have, like, the four main leprechauns, essentially, or the three, I should say, uh, Flynn and Patrick and the king, King Kevin. <laughs> 
before we go any further, Flynn is played by. Oh, yeah. Flynn is played by Sylvester McCoy, who went on to be, I think, the seventh doctor from Doctor Who. From 87 to 89. But he's also in all three Hobbit films as Radagast the Brown. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's officially here, Charnetsky. You're pushed out of the limelight for the actual actor. Uh, this guy's pretty funny. Maybe they hang out together, right? They could be variants. We don't know yet. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. I mean, this is even though it's the MDU, it's all movies connected. Yeah. So it's so, somewhere in there, the actual Lord of the Rings does exist. Oh, for sure. So you middle you middle <laughs> middle Earth. Under Earth. Do you think Underhill, like, Overhill? Do you think like the real Radagast bothers, like pisses off Charnetsky? Because like Charnetsky's a slob in and of himself, but he loves like TV and shit. He doesn't want these animals crawling all over him. That's my fucking title, there, buddy. Yeah. Why don't you go fuck yourself, you little leprechaun? Hey, Radagast shit. is like, yeah, you got no fucking animals though. You're just eating chicken. You eat animals. You don't. You don't cherish animals. Oh, he's got like bird shit all over him. <laughs> oh my sweet hedgehog. What's his name? Jeremy. Oh yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Or comes whatever out of his, his hair name is, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Charnetsky ate the fucking thing's head. Yeah. I ate that thing a long time ago. Cooked it up with some fucking chicken thighs. Where's my rastable rabbits? They're on the fucking grill yeah. there, buddy. Yeah, we're having rabbit soup. <laughs> uh, oh Tastes my God. like chicken. That's kind of crazy. Everything except this shit. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, but we have these two characters that are always introduced in the king, and it's always a kind of like a song and dance, and they they play a bit throughout the movie where they're fucking it up. Yeah, it's funny. They like announce him, and then the, the royal, the wonderful, the beautiful king of the leprechauns, uh, king, king Kevin. King Kevin. And he comes out, and he's like, oh, <laughs> my good friend Michael Donahue. <laughs> Dennehy, whatever. <laughs> He's like, get out my musical uh, utensils. Brian Dennehy. Yeah, Brian Dennehy, exactly. I loved you and Tommy Boy. Oh, my God, me too. <laughs> Vote for Dennehy. Uh, Vote for Donnelly. Uh, yeah, feet. I'm just fucking it up one after another, man. Uh, That's why I love you. Yeah, they get the musical utensils out, and they're jamming. Grandpa, oh. I'll call him Grandpa or Mike, whatever you want to call him. Grandpa he's got the accordion Mike. out. They're, oh, he's they're, got the concertina. Yeah, they're yeah. fucking jamming. They're uh, cutting a rug. Like nobody's business. But at first they're making jabs at each other. They're oh. making like he's like he's like, Oh, there you go, Mike Denny, fucking with me with the wee little people jokes. This is where he makes the joke about he compares them to like an elf. He's like, Oh, hey, we don't make those kind of jokes. <laughs> Nothing about elves. Not elf. Not elf. Uh, no Good elf and hootens. Gnome. Yeah. Well that yeah, Norm's in the corner. Yo, no yeah. Gnorm jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Good jokes. I resemble that comment, slug slime. Oh my god. Yeah. So then King Kevin makes a joke about big people. And he's like, How many how many big folk does it take to make a fire? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. And he's like, five. And Michael Denny's like I don't get it. And he's like, oh, well, I do. <laughs> yeah, I just sort of like die and laugh. And it's like the worst joke ever. I don't understand what that joke is supposed to mean. It's just a bad joke. It's a fairy the, joke. I don't get it. I, I think they just laugh because it's the king making it. I, I, that's <laughs> oh, all I good one, sire. Yeah, that was king. Literally. So he tells me they're going to America or he's going to go to America. And they're like, oh, we'd love to go to the brand new land of America. <laughs> well, they think something's up. They're like, sure. what's wrong with your boy, Michael? Why is he calling you, telling you to go to America? Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, oh, it's my son. He, he wants to see me. He loves me. He's like, your fucking son hasn't talked to you in 20 years. Wow. There's Which that, he too. hasn't. I so, mean, he's traumatized. He fought some fucking clowns. The woman he thought he was going <laughs> to, you know, grow old with leaves him for, for the guy that basically saves the day. Yeah. So so they so they, they hitch a ride with him because they're <laughs> suspicious of it. Right, yeah. But before they teleport into his fucking suitcase. Well, before we <laughs> jump into the suitcase, by the way, they have like a meeting. Oh, in, in the like, Hobbit hole. In the Hobbit hole, in the in the Leprechaun Hall. This looks so much like fucking Bilbo's house. Man, I want to be there. I want to be in the I want to be in Michael's castle and I want to be in the fucking Leprechaun Hall. I want to drink ale and and whiskey and whatever the fuck else these cats are smoking. Hey, well, sign me up. But we also uh, Old ta Toby. Talk about Radagast. We also yeah. got the Irish Gandalf <laughs> sitting here. This random fucking court wizard. He ta he, he's talking about fucking the nature of things, man. He's like, it's it's in the nature to not uh I don't even know what the fuck he's i can't uh, remember yeah his accent's pretty fucking thick it's, it's not irish though it's, it's he's trying to do irish it's he's like, like us trying to do some it's bad like accents. middle eastern it's weird he's like the wise man of the leprechauns kind of he's like the jafar of the leprechaun uh, yeah where's his fucking parrot eating saltine crackers yeah, was the, he eating cabbage and uh well, corned like, beef it would be like a horse fly or something because they're really small oh god you know 
Maybe he's got some of those pygmy dinosaurs. I know it's Scottish <laughs> with the haggis, oh but... Oh, my God, they can ride them. Yeah, oh, my... Oh, Imagine my King God. Kevin riding Elvis, the Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Now, full, 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 full moon, full beam, whatever the fuck you're moon called. Moon beam. Moon, moon beam. Go full circle. Charles Band, when that time machine, when you finally get it working, you got to go back in time and make that idea possible. <laughs> Leaping leprechauns versus prehysteria. Yeah, f- fuck doll man versus the demonic <laughs> toys. We need this movie. <laughs> Moonbeam needs to come back big time. Uh, yeah, with this idea uh, right off the bat. Uh, but they'd be so much fun. Yeah, so the, the ballerinas show up, the fairies the show fairies, up. Uh, with this bad dancing on le- the table. Yeah, led by Tina Martin, who's the queen of the fairies, who played Nell in Legend. Really? Oh. Scott's Legend? Yeah. You know, she's the one that wants uh, Lily, you know, steer clear as toadstool rings. <laughs> Oh my God, I haven't thought about that scene in a hot oh, minute. Oh man, it's great. I gotta rewatch that movie. Uh, it's been a while. The best fantasy movie ever made I just, tim curry kills it i i, I even forget tom cruise is in it, it, it <laughs> to be honest it, i think it's movies. the best the, i think it's the best thing redley scott's ever made and i think it's the best fantasy movie like ever created that that's big words yes for legend and i and i think ridley scott's a dick but i love <laughs> uh, well, a few of his movies change, yeah. yeah well yeah so so the fairy queen shows up and she's like you're not going anywhere without me king kevin yeah, oh, you need yeah, consulting yeah. of the fairies too, and he's like, "Oh, son of a bitch, this bitch is on my back again." <laughs> right, because they have an antagonistic uh, relationship. They're yeah. always kind of going at it. It's funny. They're like not like they get accused of being a couple like throughout the whole movie. Well, they're like we're not a couple. We fought one night and we were drinking that all that <laughs> fucking whiskey. <laughs> well, they definitely play up that like yeah. bickering couple kind of stereotype with the two of them. Yeah, always at each other's throats. It's it's funny. Like yeah. I like it. I think it's funny. Like there's the joke the one time when someone asked him, "Are you married?" It's like ah. I, I don't have half a brain to marry a uh, a leprechaun. And then he, he says the same thing. Ah, oh, I don't have half a brain to marry a, a, a fairy. And she's like, I didn't think leprechauns had half a brain. <laughs> it's or pretty good. Brain. Yeah. Um, so their big concern before they go, they mention the Dark Lord Vinvara, uh, which I yeah. guess is the necromancer who's eventually going to be Sar- Sauron. It kind of lines up with the way the movie ends. The way that they do the uh, supernatural folklore elements and omens of the Irish people is fucking awesome in this movie. I would have loved to actually see a banshee. But yeah. the fact that we heard one, I was like, okay. Oh man, you get you get a fucking puka. You get yeah. Vin, the Vinvara character. It's a, a, awesome. A cloud that comes to life, yeah. like a Dark Souls boss. <laughs> this fucking skull in the sky. I was like, holy shit, what is this movie? Let's not get it. I know it's a ways show. off, but holy cow, but that took do, me off they guard. Do, they do mention him here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so like Sean said before, they fucking jump into this fucking suitcase, lickety split. Yeah. They all fucking like, like phase into the his suitcase. Yeah, yeah. Except yeah. for Flynn. He, he misses. misses. Yeah. And he's on, you know, Mike, Mike Denny, he doesn't even have a car. He's riding a fucking horse and carriage to the airport. He's old school, man. He's old school. He is unplugged. Sign me up. Uh, yeah, he's living in fucking 1701. Hanging out with fucking leprechauns, getting drunk every night. Well, that's why, a castle. that's why nobody believes him when he, he starts mu- talking about them. He's fucking some old drunk. He yeah. Drinking Irish coffee well, all the time. Drink some of that morning dew, Joe, that he mentions. You want some of that morning dew there, King Kevin? <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm assuming it's Irish coffee, much like in our uh, mini sode that we covered uh, uh, last month, uh, Scream from 1981. Yeah. <laughs> They're drinking a lot of Irish coffee. Check it out. $2 tier, patreon.com slash movie dumpster. <laughs> so Mike arrives in America and his family's waiting for him. Grant Kramer, obviously yeah. his son and the rest of his family. Sharon Lee Jones plays Grant Kramer's wife, uh, Sarah. Now, she looks so familiar. I was like, who is this woman? So it turns out she's in the Princess Warrior from from uh, 89, I think. Okay. And then she's in an episode of Josh Kirby. <laughs> so she plays the sentient Raggedy Ann doll in Josh Kirby toy, Trapped in Toy World. How have we not done this by now? Because it, because, <laughs> that sentence alone? Because it's a series and I don't want to split it up. That's okay. why it's going to be a Patreon exclusive. There's, I think there's five movies. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Oh, sure. It's, it's going to be great. We're going to have a fucking blast. Anyway, she plays a hot Raggedy Ann sentient doll in that. Uh, we, we, uh, the, the daughter, I don't know if she's in anything else. Melanie? I don't know. She's cute, though. She's uh, funny. Yeah, she's good. But we also have Gregory Smith as the son, Mikey. Yes. Who then would go on there. Here's some more MDU shit if we want to get into it. Or maybe we could save this for a future episode of this movie that I would love to cover. Uh, he's Alan Abernathy in Small Soldiers. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, so I don't know if there's some funky shit that happens with his father at the end of this where he gets, you know, uh, adopted off to somebody else or maybe he he's a different actor again in the future. I, I, I'm not really sure of the timeline, but hey, Joe, if you want to cover some small soldiers at some point, a little Joe Dante that's not necessarily Gremlins related, I, we could maybe expand on this kid's uh, lore. There's, but... a, there's a pantheon of Joe Dante. And I don't know if I want to start with small soldiers, but I definitely want to get to small soldiers. Okay, that's fine. I mean, Gremlins 2 might have to come first. I feel like that's the howling that... needs to come oh, first. I yeah, want to talk true. about the howling. The howling is yeah. definitely right up there at the top, yeah. Joe. You're right. But yeah, definitely. Uh, it was kind of funny seeing him in here in, in a younger role because that is the only other movie I recognize this uh, he's, kid from is Small Soldiers. He's also in uh, Hobo with a Shotgun with Rucker. Oh, Howard. really? He, play, he plays Slick. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the only other horror thing. icon apparently. <laughs> So, so they get back to the house, and Denny he goes, well, Mike Denny he goes into his room and yeah. opens up a suitcase, and the leprechauns are in there. And he's like, "Oh, for the love of Mike, what are you doing here, you and your shenanigans?" And this is definitely when you start ramping up, which makes sense because before he's only by himself, yeah. but now it's like everyone sees him talking to these invisible creatures, and yeah. they're like, "Ah, oh, Dad." So, so the way that it's played in the movie is that he's got like the DTs, like he's a crazy old fucking drunk man. Yeah. He's yeah, an old, crazy <laughs> drunk Irish guy. Too much Irish whiskey, yeah. uh, you know, Irish coffee, a little bit of everything, popping some Irish mushrooms, maybe. And now, before we keep going into this, yeah, Grant Kramer grew up in Ireland in Fairy Hill. Is he like Peter Pan and Hook or some shit? Like he forgot that the leprechauns existed and just moved to America and just uh, forgot it I all? I think he's got PTSD after that whole clown incident. Yeah. It's just like blocked out of his mind. He's just got a barrier made out of cotton candy somewhere inside his inner lobe. It never clicks, though. And no matter how many times his father talks about the yeah. leprechauns or the wee folk or whatever, like, he never just, like, he, he never just, like, accepts it or it never, like, kickstarts his memory or brain or anything. He's just like, you're a fucking crazy dad. Yeah, but we also kind of start to get introduced to this whole family dynamic, which is, uh, which is immediately concerning. Because you have, again, the kid Mikey... Uh, is kind of like doing his own thing, doesn't really interact with the family, is just on the computer, which I feel like I was that kid, so I felt personally attacked a little bit, but... It's a little different than that, though, Sean. Well, sure, because what, what is he actually looking up? He's like, oh, I'm writing a paper for the science club on the, the, the different ways the world's gonna end. Yeah, he's, he's like a science... He's a very matter-of-fact, yeah. like, uh, you know, he's like an Egon Spengler type. Sure, yeah, You yeah, know, yeah, where yeah. it's like matter-of-factly and science-orientated and um, rational... Uh, rationale orientated and statistically orientated. Sure. Um, so he's got no time for magic and fairies, and that's all bullshit. What are you even talking about? Well, and the parents are actually like, Egon was a bad way to explain that because he believes in the supernatural. Uh, at least, yeah, yeah. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Kind of like that stereotype. Clinical, clinical. Yes. yes. Um, he's got no imagination. Which the parents are kind of like, oh, we don't want to screw up like we screwed the last kid up. So they have the daughter doing fucking flashcards on like college level like art trivia. They over she's like Rembrandt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the night, the night breed. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, she's holding up different flashcards. And then Grant Kramer's like, all right, that's enough fucking art for today, baby. Let's do some math problems. <laughs> Break the equations and out. Like, so we're going from Rembrandt and Renaissance, identifying Renaissance paintings to doing simple multiplication and division. Oh, well, yeah, we, th this is a great joke, though, because it's like playing up. Oh, look how smart our kid is. Look how smart my kid is. Here's an addition uh, problem. What's two plus two? And she's just like, Poopy. Did she say poopy? <laughs> yeah. She says poopy, right? Uh, yeah, well, first he goes one plus one, yeah. and she says peepee. He's like, no, not number one as in the bathroom. And then, <laughs> then that two plus two is poopy. And he's like, all right, maybe we're done for now. By the way, this girl's like four. Yeah, maybe, maybe yeah. pushing four, yeah. And like- you know, even even grandpa's like, what? This is like, you guys are making her work. She's like, this is what we do for fun, dad. Grandpa, Just, uh, whatever. This is what we do. Grandpa comes out with his concertina. He's like, let's all fucking jam around and play and dance. And Grand Kramer's like, I'm reading the fucking paper. And my kid's doing <laughs> flashcards. And the yeah. other one's writing a fucking science paper. This is our idea of fun, Dad. But I love how Mike is just like, fuck this. Gets the accordion out. <laughs> starts playing a little Irish music. Starts jamming around. Oh, they're jigging around all yeah. over that fucking living room. They're loving it. So yeah, so so right at, like right after that, John goes back into his like office, and oh, right, and yeah. he like confirms with his surveyors. He's like, "Yeah, my dad's out of the country. Knock it down, baby. Put up that fucking Ireland land." He turns around and there's a fucking map on the wall, and it says Ireland land. Yeah, yeah. Why like, is like, it like your Disney map or whatever? Yeah, but wh why don't you just call it Ireland? Ire dash land. 
Ireland, uh, not Ireland land. Maybe Ban thought if he did, if he spelt it that way, kids wouldn't get it. Also, like, why is it not called Fairyland? Well, he's, he's trying to bank on the Ireland stuff. He's gonna have all this shit we have on the it's table in and Ireland. All, all the stuff my mom has in the house. <laughs> yeah, but it's in Ireland. Yeah, you don't need to fucking tell people where they are. Ah, uh, it's a stupid idea anyway. <laughs> I mean, I'm I, again. I've said I'm Irish. We kind of already talked about that. I'm I'm all for it on paper to a point. There's like a, I don't need like I I don't need America land. You know, like I, I don't. It's need called that Epcot. Shit. It's called well, Epcot. Yeah, exactly. There's a fucking there's a fucking uh, banshee roller. Coaster, Rawhead Rex is walking around pissing on people. It's just like that fucking fair in in Luck of the Irish, the the, the <laughs> Irish Heritage Festival on a grand scale. Though. I do still love that idea of Rawhead just being the mascot walking around because yeah, I, I, it's funny. We've joked about this Ireland land concept in the past, yeah. not really even calling it that. Just the idea of these characters, you know, again going back to some of that movie Dumpster Universe shit, yeah. where they interact with each other because that's the gag. But you're right, like you'd have the people in. The, we might even have talked about this before with Rawhead. <laughs> Walking around killing people. It's yeah. not even a guy in a costume in a rawhead costume. It's literally rawhead <laughs> ripping shirts off, exposing titties, ripping it's, heads off. It's in the Luck of the Irish episode. Yeah, yeah. And you're then right. Grant Kramer heard that episode and was like, "We're doing yeah. Ireland lands, this baby." Fucker from what was this nineteen ninety uh, whatever <laughs> Four. stole this idea from us from a podcast that came out fifteen plus years later. 20 John years Hurt, later. John Hurt went back in time, dropped it off right on his fucking desk, dude. Drew it up and put it right out there. Fucking Buchanan, man. He's influenced in dreams like fucking Cthulhu, man. That's what he does. First it was the Baldwin incident <laughs> and alligator, now this. <laughs> it never ends. John Hurt, why? Why do you do this to us? So he's so yeah, so he's like, shut up, dad. That's what my family does for fun. And then they have dinner. Oh, yeah, they have dinner. And this is the first of many dinner scenes where uh the leprechauns are kind of just like making fun, you know, not, not making fun. Well, they are making fun, but they're like causing shit to go wrong at the dinner table. So they make like the rice fly off of John's fork. And even uh, a grandpa's like, hey, Mikey, you saw them once. He's like, well, I was two when my brain wasn't fully formed yet, grandpa. <laughs> Give it a rest. <laughs> it's like, what? Before they say for the little girl, they're like, they're like, we need equal parts right brain function and left brain function uh, for two hours a day or some shit like that. Like with the flash, with the uh, art yeah. and the fucking numbers. I'm like. This kid's gonna be fucked up when they get older, man. Yeah, which which then we see a fucking roll move across the ground like a slug. Oh, uh, dude, she's like, my roll moved on its own, mommy, like a dog. It's like, okay. Also, like, and grandpa's like, what, dude, stop. Like, you're looking at the table like no one else sees oh, him at this point. He's yelling at the leprechauns on the table and they're like, they're like fucking stealing the bread. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. And it fucking comes off the plate and she's like, my roll. Oh, it's great. It's great. Um, John, uh, John, I was going to say John Kramer. Uh, <laughs> Grant Kramer's like. Uh, John Kramer? Yeah. Who's he got his fucking like saw set up in the other room? His Riddler set up? So what happens is we're going to put a bunch of little people in this trap and see what happens. We're going to catch a leprechaun tonight. What does a leprechaun do when it's dead? <laughs> it, it lies or something. I don't know. A workshop <laughs> it. It leaps around. Yeah. Leaping. It leaprechaun. leaps. It, yeah, leaps, it leaps, leaps, obviously. Yeah. Um. So, so he's basically, so Grant Kramer's like, shut the fuck up, uh, dad. Like, you know, you, you're scaring the kids. You're fucking talking. You got the DTs. You're, you're, you're <laughs> drunk. You're talking to fucking little people on the table. And he's like, I'm not fucking crazy. They're right there. Yeah. And, and the leprechauns like make Grant Kramer like throw food in oh, his yeah. face. Rice goes flying. Now, this is the first of food shenanigans. If I lost control of my hand eating and it threw the food in my own face, I'd be a little worried. I'd Muscle spasm or I'd something. Be a, I'd be a little worried. Yeah. Right? Get a little Michael J. Fox thing going, maybe. Let's say it's not leprechauns. Maybe you got that. Yeah. Mm. I yeah, I, I would definitely be like, like a doctor's appointment if it happened more than once. Yeah. I'd be like, ooh. Well, he has a fucking full poltergeist episode in his office in a little while. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. this guy just does a give a fuck. Oh, by the way, is it isn't Grant Kramer like well off? Like That's what I'm saying. He's got that money he stole from all the townsfolk that were killed by the killer <laughs> no, clowns. No, but I'm saying like he's got a lot of money. Why the yeah. fuck is he bothering his father in Ireland to do a fucking uh, an, uh, an Ireland theme park? Well, he talks about that a little later. I don't know if you want to touch, talk about that now. He's like, I got to secure my nest egg, man. Yeah, well, he says to his dad even later when he finally drops the bomb on him, like, I want to make you a lot of money, dad. So I think what it really is, he honestly thinks this is a good idea. To help the family, and he just legitimately thinks his dad's crazy and won't, and is like talking about little people on the ground. So he's like, 
well, my dad is just crazy, so there's no real little people. So if I just like, like in reality, I'm like, okay, yeah, John, you're right. Like yeah. your dad's just fucking crazy. But in the context of this film, where this is a real thing happening, it's like, John, maybe, maybe at least give dad a, ch a chance here. Yeah, but it's you know we'll get to it like at the end. And yeah, oh, I, yeah. I want to revisit that, but that but I just wanted to get sure, that. Sure, sure. So then uh, we kind of cut to the next day and we have uh, grandpa's outside and he's kind of starting to plant some flowers. He brought fucking seeds that yes. this fairy queen gave him. And he's like, oh, I got to make a I got to make a house for the fee, for the fae folk around here. Yeah, because that's where they all live. Yeah. Uh, so, he, so he plants the seeds with his yeah. niece or his niece, Jesus Christ, his granddaughter right. and uh, his uh, his uh, daughter -in daughter in law. Well, we have this neighbor character gets introduced. Oh, boys. Mr. Mr. Voisniak. Uh, Mr. I'm, uh, you're crazy already inside my mind. <laughs> Russian stereotype Actually, number one. Well, he's Romanian. The actor. Okay, excuse but me. He, but they have him put on like a German accent. And this accent was so I thought he was German. Then it was like the last name was Boisnevik or something like that. Bo it's Boisniak. It, it, it just kind of was like very confusing for me. But whatever. Foreign person from <laughs> from from the old country. Grant Kramer calls him like Voisy. He's like, hey, Voisy, baby. What, how you doing yeah, over there? They're like psychiatrists, both him and oh, his yeah. wife. But they also imply that this hospital they work at is like fucked up. But they never really go it's deep fucking into Arkham that. Asylum. That's where they Yeah. Work. But he's like watching grandpa talk to the fucking flower pots. Yeah, and he's like, that old man is very peculiar. Uh, yeah, meanwhile, the fucking leprechauns are like, yeah, oh my God, I was cramped in there last night. And the queen's like, yeah, uh, leprechauns are fidgety sleepers. It's like, holy <laughs> I shit. I had the king's ass in my face and I had Flynn's face in my ass. Yeah, Flynn and Patrick, they really just red rocket each other all night. Who knew? <laughs> they wouldn't shut the fuck up. It's just blasting cum all over <laughs> the place. Oh, I don't know. They're leprechauns. I don't know what they do in their own time. Just went from zero to one. Um, I don't know. Check those flower beds. I don't know. Oh, look the shamrock shake there, shorty boy. That, exactly. Uh, I think that starfish just spit up a little. But uh, you know, we we go to this scene basically where Ma's painting inside. Yeah. Well, she wants to paint, so yes. she's like, she's like, hey, kid from she's semi retired. She's like, hey, kid from small. She's a fucking. She's she, a stay at home mom. She's a stay at home mom. Yeah. She's not retired. Yeah. Um, she gave it up, I should say. Yeah, right. But uh kid from Small Soldiers is going out to the park and, and his mom's like, oh, take your grandpa and your and your sister. And they're like, he's okay. like, oh, man. And he's like, oh, fucking what a drag. Buzzkill, mom. <laughs> <laughs> so they go there. Mike's walking around with his little granddaughter and he's like, oh, look at the faithful. You should always be nice to nature and, you know, always be good or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, the little kid from Small Soldiers is like, oh, I see my friends coming to grab out. Don't fucking embarrass me, man. Friends. Yeah. They come up on these this group of kids playing, like, football. Yeah. And, like, it's the weirdest exchange I've ever seen in my life. Like, the kid's just like, hey, man. And he's like, sup? And he's like, sup? And he's like, you want to play with us? He's like, uh, Kim, my grandpa's here. And they're like, okay. And they just turn around and walk away. It's not like <laughs> they're, like, bullying him or anything. <laughs> no. Or, like, he's trying to be in with the cool kids or wh well, whatever. He's definitely trying to be in with them, but it, it's such a bad conversation. And even Grandpa's like, that was pitiful there, Mikey. What the hell was that? Well, one of the kids drops a fucking Snickers bar wrapper or some shit. He's like, oh, you little fucker, pick that up. As he should have said. Yeah. And then like you're embarrassing me, Grandpa, in oh, front of the cool yeah. kids. Even now, like, now you set me back twenty years. Yeah, two, two, you, two years in grade school or whatever. So then the leprechauns are like, "Well, we know, Mister Dennehy, you told us not to mess with your family, but what about the other little ruffians ruining our nature?" And then they start fucking with this kid, and it's, 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 a, I think it's a basketball, actually, not a football. They start bouncing this thing off of trees, <laughs> like fucking, like, uh, <laughs> like that <laughs> thing in Men in Black that fucking shoots all over and caused oh, the blackout in 1939 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, the great attractor. He thought it was funny as hell. Yeah, and it's like hitting the kids in the back of the head, knocking them over. <laughs> they got swings going like this fast in the play park. The kids are flying off, spinning, landing like the fucking flying graces on their feet. Like, it's like, crazy. Yeah, but like they bully the, they, they 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 fuck with the bully kids. Oh, right. Yeah, but then yeah. they're just like, eh, fuck it, let's fuck with all these little bastards. And then like they're making a fucking merry-go-round, oh spin around. God. Kids are flying off. Kids are fucking doing backflips yeah. off the swing. My favorite is the is the one on the slide. It goes up the slide and shoots the fuck off and like does a backflip into oh the into the grass. Uh, it's funny. And they all land on their feet. They all land on their feet or like, like on their oh, butt and they're okay. What happened? Yeah. So then Melanie's like, oh my God, I saw the leprechauns. This is amazing. Grandpa, they're real. And the little girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I just wanted to note that because when Grandpa yells at those kids to pick up that 
the decent, trash. The yeah, trash. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, "Don't sit home with the wee folk, you little bastard." The fucking kid turns around and spits on the ground. <laughs> yeah, well, you that's little shit. That's what sets the leprechauns off. Yeah. They, they were already pissed yeah. about the Snickers yeah, wrapper. Yeah, yeah. Now they're like, "Oh, <laughs> you crossed the fucking line yeah. there." Uh. So then we cut back to the house and mom's painting. Right, okay. But she's yeah. like, you know, she's she's kind of getting back into the groove of it. But the fairy queen's like, oh, that looks like shit. Let me fix it. And she like makes this, like, mom like turns away for a second and she like makes it all nice. And she's like, huh, I guess I am good at painting. Yeah, she thinks it's a little weird. You know, it's a still life of flowers that you definitely didn't draw, but okay. Boom, the fucking door gets kicked in. Mom! Grandpa humiliated me at the park. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. He's like a little dickhead. <laughs> Grandpa and Melanie walk in and she's just, she can't shut up about the leprechauns. And that's when mom's getting a little nervous. Like, hey, dad, could you maybe like roll it back a little with the leprechaun talk? <laughs> He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He was the fucking wee folk. They yeah. did it. I don't, yeah. I, I, it's out of my hands. I, can't, yeah. I told him not to. Stop with that mischief. <laughs> he keeps saying that over and over again. That's like his one he goes, always goes back to. <laughs> The next day, Grandpa's back outside talking to the fucking box. Voiceniac comes out. He's like, "Oh yeah, the man is talking to the box again." Because after after Voiceniac's looking at him, he like walks over to him, and he's like, "Hello, old man. What are you doing there?" And he's like, oh, "I I uh, I was talking to the, to the flowers. Yeah, the flowers. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh yeah." And he's like, goes, "Would you believe me if I told you there were leprechauns in there?" And he's like, "No, that doesn't make any sense." And he's like. Well, top of the morning, yeah, I yeah. see you later. It's pretty good. <laughs> so they're sitting at dinner, right? Yeah, they're sitting at dinner and it's a, it's quiet. Like, you know, you drop a pin, you could hear it. What's wrong with everybody? Everybody's quiet. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's a barrel of laughs tonight. <laughs> Mikey starts talking, or, yeah. With the yeah Mike, Mikey's like, oh, I hate Grandpa. Why does he have to live here? <laughs> He's like, shut up. And, and Melanie's like, no, well, we really watched leprechauns, Mikey. I saw them. They made the kids fly off the swing sets. Oh, yeah. The kids were flying. Children were flying everywhere, <laughs> Daddy. It was mystifying. Um, And then you have moms like, yeah, well, you know, I didn't see any leprechauns, but it was really weird. My painting painted itself. Wasn't that really weird? <laughs> no one gives a shit at all, Mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> Grant's like, you're all fucking crazy. Shut up. Uh, he, like, gets up. He gets all pissed. He goes in the other room. He's like, come here, Dad. I want to show you something. Right. So, so he brings uh, Dennehy into the room, Grandpa into the room. To he's show like, him his big plan. And he's, he's like, all right, old man, let me tell you something. Remember that piece of property in, in Ireland you got? And he's like, <laughs> that oh, you're always talking yeah, about and always cherishing? Fairy Hill, that's our, that's our birthright and all this shit. And he's like, it's going to be yours one day, Mikey and he, uh, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to have to take care of the fairies Mr. There. Tobacco. Yeah, Mr. Tobacco. <laughs> Still using that? And no. Okay. Grant Kramer's like, ah, here's the thing. I made you come to America so I could bulldoze your fucking property and make it Ireland land. Look, Dad, it's going to be great. Yeah, d just like the end of uh, A Very Unlucky Leprechaun, <laughs> actually. Oh, it's the when, same story. When they destroy the fucking mansion with a bulldozer at the end. The fucking wrecking ball goes oh into the little God. girl's bedroom and, like, knocks Almost her out. Almost kills her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, of course, you know, I don't know what John thought was going to happen. Like, Dad was going to be like, oh, Okay, great. No, he's like fucking pissed. You he's horn like, swoggled your your father. Yeah, he says that. He's like, oh man, you 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 know this was in the family. It was handed down to us. Yeah, trust to this. It, yeah, because they're the we folk. They're protectors of the fairy, the 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 fairy hole, the fairy the fairy right. folk. And you know, of course, John doesn't believe it at all. He just thinks his dad just an asshole. He needs to be left unspoiled, John. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> well, he charges out of the room all pissed off. And this is like you were kind of alluding to earlier, Joe. Uh, John's office gets attacked of the uh, paranormal kind, it feels like. because yeah. the uh, <laughs> it's a paranormal activity. Yeah. yeah, TM, because the leprechaun just starts fucking knocking all the shit over. They knock a, a, a pot of flowers over. The queen does that. And the water gets all over his blueprints. Oh, big time. Uh, they're, they're shaking like pens and shit all at him. Like, well, what else did they do to they him? They throw a bunch of shit at him and he's like not perturbed at all. They knock his chair over while he's sitting on yeah, it. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, that was weird. Whatever. Well, eventually after he gets like hit with a few different things and things flying all over the place, like fucking like, uh, like you just said, paranormal activity or something like conjuring. He finally like <laughs> walks out of the room and is like, okay, that was a little that weird. That was strange. Well, it doesn't matter. My dad's uh, has no power. I don't know how he superseded his father in 
destroy like being able to do the land <sighs> stuff like it'll actually like build on that property I think without permission well i think he's going over his head and his whole plan well no i'm not I'm, legally how is he doing that? well that's what i'm saying i think legally he's not i think he's there and he's even saying in this scene and, oh trying and, to get him to do it yeah like agree to it like i want you to enjoy it dad i don't want to just do this when you're dead and it just fall, you know then the title gets to me yeah so it's like okay i guess he could have just been super underhanded and just done this after his dad died but also like you're still trying to just do it under his nose so what 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 in your head made you think that duping your father to come out to see you in america and having people start construction on the land that you don't own right would make any sense and and be okay with your old man like, like, was he going to hold a gun to his fucking head and be like, Dad, sign this? Like, what was the plan when he said no? I think Grant Kramer knew that he... I think Grant Kramer knew about the leprechauns, right? But he just keeps saying he doesn't believe in them, so he didn't have to deal with their bullshit. But he knows that his dad has those leprechauns. And he knows that he lives next door to a fucking uh, psychiatrist or psychologist. True. He brought him there not to to, to be like... What do you say we 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 do this together? No, okay. Yeah. Why don't you go talk to the leprechauns outside, Dad? <laughs> hey, Mister Voizniak, can you come look at my dad real quick? Well, he definitely has an ulterior motive, which sure. becomes way more apparent towards the well, end here. It's where so fucked up. It's like, yeah, you're 100 percent right. He's trying to make him look crazy in front of this psychiatrist, and it's like. I'm t- Hey, maybe he had a second plan, like a B plan or a C plan, yeah. where maybe, you know, again, at the end of Killer Clowns, they get hit in the face with those pies that don't melt them. But maybe if they got him off quick enough, threw him in like a cooler, and he's got yeah. like as a backup weapon. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Kind of like a thinner situation. He just gets his dad to eat it, and it kills him on the inside. <laughs> quick, lick this off my face. Yeah, yeah. And maybe that was like, if, if he couldn't get him put away in a home. Could be. Just make him eat the, the tainted pies from yeah. the Killer Clowns. But yeah, no, he just is a, it's a fucking dickhead. Yeah, he's a total asshole. Like, your dad is the nicest dude. He's your fucking dad. He, he just, you know, wants the He's world friends with for the fucking you. leprechauns, yeah, man. Why yeah. are you fucking with that? And you just don't believe him. No. So now, Grandpa, everybody's had enough of Grandpa's shit. So one by one, Grandpa makes the whole family see the leprechauns. <laughs> first in in the, a great way. First is the little girl. Yeah. Um, she already wants to see him. She so already it's wants easy. to see him, so it's easy. They're just like, all you gotta do is say you want to see him and you can see him. And then she's like, I wanna see him. Oh, the leprechauns. Yeah. And then they're dancing and making fucking jokes and they're drinking coffee and all kinds of shit, spitting it out. They get mom involved is the best when mom well, finally mom comes sees in them. and she's like, Dad, look, you telling little girl there's fucking leprechauns, there's no leprechauns there. And he's like, Oh, they're the, they're right there. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, there's a King Kevin's on your garbage can. <laughs> and she hits the pedal and he fucking flies up. <laughs> oh my god, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You got one of those trash cans with the pedal on the bottom. Yeah, the lid opens. Yeah. Oh, he lands in it. And she's like, still think it's bullshit. And she sees like the the the, the garbage can shaking. Mm-hmm. He's like, Oh, you're only the second person ever to catch King Kevin in the begun. <laughs> Me being the first, of course. He's like, now you get three wishes. And she's like, oh, okay, I see that garbage can moving. And maybe I believe. He's like, all you got to say is you believe. And you can see them. I believe. And then they, like, fucking appear. And then he's, like, oh, in the King trash. Kevin at your side of his. Yeah, comes out with a yeah. banana peel on his fucking head. <laughs> They're picking garbage off of him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they introduce him again, of course. And now mom's now in on the deal. And now it's just kind of like, all right. Now we just got to get the last two curmudgeons to see them. Then he's like, fairies, Mikey, it's fairies, my boy. Let's play little horseshoes to get you on the team. <laughs> I loved, did you play horseshoes as a kid? Oh, that was a, ma- a mainstay. I don't know if, was it, it, was I don't it, know really? if it's an Irish thing, a Jersey it's, it's thing. It's definitely an Italian thing, too. Uh, yeah, well, that lines up. What did I say earlier? A yeah. little bit of the Italian uh, Irish uh, concoction in well, my family. Well, there you go. Well, we, we always play, like at barbecues and stuff, family get-togethers, yep. we always had the shoes mm-hmm. outside. We had the two fucking metal posts and the horseshoes. We should get those, man. Man. I love I, playing I love horseshoes. Play shoes. It's Hell always yeah. fun. Fucking cook some cook on the grill. Yeah, sounds good. Like an alligator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw the, get that hickory. Gotta, gotta be careful because if we use the fucking Slade's recipe, we're gonna attract that giant fucking alligator. Uh, we just gotta make sure our uh, our cooking area is in between <laughs> its its kill zone. It's kill den. <laughs> well, we're up on a hill. We'll be yeah. fine. We're up on Fairy Hill. We'll be sure, right. sure. We'll, we'll attract the leprechauns. That's we'll get fun. them in there. At least if they bring whiskey, you're well more than welcome. Oh yeah, <laughs> leave the cores light with the with the green shit in it. At They're home. not drinking that. They're yeah. drinking Guinness. That, that was my house. They, <laughs> they have the Guinness and my my dad's side of the family always with the cores light with the green shit in it, the the, the food coloring, and they pound those cores lights. That's disgusting. Uh but speaking of horseshoes and cores light, they play <laughs> horseshoes, and there's some tomfoolery where uh, Grandpa keeps getting ringers, and the uh, leprechauns keep knocking them off, and yeah. and forcing Mikey to get ringers. Yeah. Which if you don't know how horseshoes works, that's the best point amount of points you can get well you have to get it the closest to the pole right and if you get it on the pole it's like extra points they call it a ringer yeah um so then he finally is like hey what's going on this is this kind of weird grandpa what the hell 
Oh, he's a part of the fairies, Mike. The leprechauns, Mikey. Look oh. around, Mikey. He sees it. Say he... you believe, Mikey. He's like, all right, I believe. And he's like, oh, my God. Oh, he is like, oh, this is great. We got to show dad. Dad's going to flip. Yeah. So dad's the last fucking holdout. Mom's going to freak. Your mom already knows. <laughs> I know. So then they're they're ready to show dad and uh, the boys in the axe are coming over for dinner to really, you know, to put put dad in the fucking coffin already. Man, fucking Vlad Dracula and his wife come to dinner because he's like, hello, good evening, welcome. This is, this is like something out of like Goosebumps, like a Goosebumps villain. It feels like that, right? Like he's going to turn into a fucking monster yeah, at and, dinner? And get eaten at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but they're there, and we kind of go back to a lot of these dinner shenanigans, but at this point now, Dad and now the guests are the ones that can't see them. I figured it out. Sure. The Voisniak, Voisniak hears Grandpa talking about the little people, and he's like, oh, yeah, you see the little people, hey? And he's like, oh, yeah, they're all over the place. They're all they're in the ground over there and over there. He's like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll come to dinner with you. <laughs> I want to know about the elephant hood. And- oh, he's looking You are it. keeping the secret, you Irishman. Dobby's in the corner hiding. <laughs> oh, not me, not me. John, John Netsky, why did you send me here? We must bring about the master race. Uh, yeah, Dobby's there. He got sent there trying to find that other Radagast. But yeah, John Netsky's <laughs> sick of playing second fiddle to Radagast. I love how the voice the acts are like sleeper agents for oh, the Nazis. That's what it feels like, right? <laughs> It really so, does. And they're looking for the elephant hoot, and they're like, oh, so they're right next door. Yeah. This they, is great. They, they got to go out in the woods, and they got to find that pebble or whatever. Not even. They're living in the fucking Denny He household. What? Yeah, they that's capture possible. a leprechaun. They fit, they force him to tell him where the elephant hooting are. That's it. It's yeah, over. Yeah, it's like Antichrist. Be- like Lord of the Rings. We were talking about it earlier. It's kind of like that. It's like the beginning with you. Back in! <laughs> Get back in, Jesus! It's like that, but the equivalent of whatever this is. That's Norm when they steal the Lumen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Elfin Lumen! <laughs> Lumen! Um, but yeah, they're there, and they don't believe, but everyone besides them and Dad uh, believes, so they see more of the shenanigans. They're knocking yeah. the food off of their plate. Yeah, and he's like, he, he's are flying. He's like, he's like, don't we have gifts? Don't. No oh, tomfoolery. Yeah. And he's That's like, are you, see- he are you seeing lot. them now? Are you seeing the leprechauns on the table? And he's like, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, the whole family's cracking up, trying not to laugh. Uh, th- everybody sees them and like, she picks up, he picks up the peas and like dumps them on his wife. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, what? Like, what? They, they, then they deduce it to like poltergeist activity. Yeah, but they, they, they leave in a huff and the wife is especially pissed but they, off. But they're still going to lock Mike Dennehy up in the fucking loony bin. Well, as we find out. Yeah, right? but like you involuntarily dumped a whole thing of peas. You know, mistake is pissed off because, you, <laughs> you know, they have to have the peas in home sweet home. You're you, right. You yeah. got to have the peas. Where are the peas? They're all nah, over fucking Miss Voice. In the by, body by Jake was outside <laughs> looking in. Just <laughs> 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 in the window. <laughs> Ruin those fucking peas. As long as there's no turkey being left out all night. He's, he's not going to attack, but. Close. It was a close call. So he's like, yeah, um, good night, Grand Claymer. We'll put all of your family in the padded rooms, okay? We'll do it tomorrow. Sign the contracts. Bye. Well, he says this outside to him, yeah. though, and not realizing the leprechauns, of course, can mean, hear this all. Mean fucking wow. Grand Claymer's like, oh, yeah, my whole family's <laughs> going to be put in the way, and I'm going to get all the monies. Yeah. And so the, he yeah, the leprechauns in. go inside and they tell the they tell everybody. Yeah, so he goes in and he's got everyone's like sitting there like, you know, imagine me tapping my foot, like looking at him like, Dad, that's <laughs> really fucked up. That's what they did to grandma and hug a bunch. Like, oh, really? No. That's what you're gonna do? <laughs> they sent her away without the young berries. Mm, putting her out to pasture, as yeah. the kid says in that film. Took her in the back and gave her the old fucking Well, at least grandma and hug a bunch, the th- they don't they don't end up doing it as we find out in that movie, but you know, she was going to the nursing home. Mm. He's literally gonna give his dad to the nut house just to get his inheritance yeah, early. Literally, he's like he's like, you know, say boys, Nick. Um uh if my father somehow became um Shall we say inept to take care of his uh, <laughs> estate? Yeah. Who would it go to? Well, of course it'd go to the next of kin that is was in his uh, lineage. Yeah. And he's like, all right. So he goes, hey, dad. Okay, yeah. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> fucked up. I won't do it. You're right. Hey, dad, you want to go for a ride? I've never <laughs> mentioned this before. I'm uh, going for a ride with you since you've since you've come home. Well, but... he, he tricks them because he's he's like he's like, uh, you know what? I've been a real jerk. Yeah. I, I, we're not gonna, we're not gonna build Ireland land. We're gonna leave it alone. It's, it's the wee folk home. And they're all like, that's so awesome. And, and mom's like, you want to see the wee folk? He's like, no. <laughs> yeah. I've seen enough weird shit in my life. 
my my ex girlfriend got put in a fucking balloon by some killer clowns. Have I mentioned I I fought and defeated killer clowns from outer space? It kind of did a number on my mental stability. So excuse me if I'm having a little bit of a daddy issue right now. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Yeah, he's in his sleep saying that again over and over again. And and meanwhile, Adam's family too is happening on the other <laughs> side of the country. Um. So, so yeah, like you said, uh, he kind of tricks dad, yeah, or grandpa rather, into getting into the car. He's like, Dad, you want to go for a ride, Dad? And his fucking, I feel so bad. He's, he's like, like, Oh, I love, I, I love that idea so much. I haven't, I haven't been out with my son in forever. We're gonna go on, we're yeah. gonna go on a, a trip. We're gonna go on a little, a little ride there in a car, not in a fucking carriage. Yeah, well, right, yeah. So they're driving away and the fucking puka appears. Now the puka could be a multitude of different types of entities, but oh, okay. in this it particularly shows up as a black uh horse. Yeah. Stallion. Stallion, excuse me. Yeah. Uh so right away like Dennehy uh, grandpa Dennehy is fucking, like, "Oh no, this is a bad sign." He's fucking freaking out. The fucking clouds come over, the fucking puka shows up and it's like bleh, 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 bleh. Uh, he hears the the yell the, of the banshee. The banshee, the scream of the banshee. He's like, "It's a bad omen. Something's going to We're going to die." My uh, Johnny. So then the leprechaun. Meanwhile, Grant Kramer can't see any of this oh, shit. Yeah. He's like, "What are you talking about? The fucking sky's clear." Well, and he, he sees the horse. He does see the horse. Does he? Yeah, he sees the oh. horse. I uh, because they th that comes up in a little bit. Uh, he can see the evil Joe. I love how I love how they they pull all of this from the Irish folklore. Yeah. It's, it's oh, very yeah. it's very cool. And, and and it was set up earlier in the film, so it doesn't feel like it's just happening. Also, we forgot to mention you need a bunch of milk and you dump uh, yep, the milk on yep. your friend and you hug them real tight. Right, because that's that's what's being it's, That's the cure for the evil spirit. Uh, right, Miak, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I Not thought he couldn't get any this time uh, of year. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. it. Mom is having this explained to her by the leprechauns when they start to hear all these yes. things and realize it's uh this bad guy. What the fuck's his name again? Vern F Troyer? No, <laughs> Vinvara. Vinvara. Yeah. Uh, who is this, this, this evil, like, Witcher-esque kind of villain. I mean, he's uh, like Skeletor uh, when we see him. Oh my god. I'm, I'm sure it's something out of, like, the, the, the Irish lore, I'm, folklore. I'm into it. He looks like death. Like, he carries yes. a scythe and he's like a hood, he's like a cloaked skeleton man. Uh, Charles Band, once again, makes a character on a struish on a shoestring budget look very intimidating, even though it's just basically a Halloween costume. This is prime... This is prime time for, for yeah. Moonbeam and Full Moon right now, right around this era. So mom's getting the, uh, the it's got to be cow's milk specifically ready. Yeah. I mean, Demonic Toys is being filmed in another right. lot. Oh, well, like, it yeah. comes out the same year. Sure, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. But yeah, mom's getting the milk ready while uh, Mikey's like, ah, this is going to take too long, fuck it. Gets on the bike. He rides his bike to catch up with yeah. his dad. Doing all the shortcuts through the woods yeah. and everything while the car's driving. Meanwhile, like I <laughs> joked about earlier, this Dark Souls fucking boss <laughs> appears in the sky, this Elden Ring boss, this cloud that turns into a skeleton with like a crown. Sean, it's Vinvara's <laughs> horse. It's Vinvara's host. Uh, He's come from the darkness. Well, uh, okay, so this is all going on while Grandpa's screaming. And uh, Skeletor appears on the top of the fucking car. Yup. And and okay, so Jake Busey's there with his side. Uh, well, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So while this is all happening, we forgot to mention, or maybe we did briefly, but Mom gets three wishes from the king from catching him. Oh right. So the first one she says is like, "Oh, I wish everyone could see you." And he's like, "Well, it doesn't work like that. They have to see it. We can't just make it happen." There's one wish gone. Sorry, lass. <laughs> so then, second wish: I wish everyone in my family was safe today. And it was like. Well, that will work, but only if John believes that we're real. Okay, let's teleport near him, I guess. This will take a few minutes, even though they disappear instantly. Um, so, 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 so what, what's it? Little, little Johnny. <laughs> Mikey. Little Mikey is fucking riding his bike, and Grant Kramer sees him and says, oh, is that Johnny? And he's coming down this, like, dirt path. Yeah. And for whatever reason, Grant Kramer is doing, like, 100 miles an hour on, like, fucking Dead Man's like, Curve. Again, like Alligator, that cop that's flying down like, the street. Huh? And he fucking turns, and this fucking car goes flying off this fucking cliff and, like, does a tumble. Well, because the puka appears again. Oh, that's right, and yeah. Then, and he sees Mikey at the last minute come around the puka, yeah. so he's got to swerve, and, yeah, yeah, the car goes flying off the edge. It might as well explode like Groundhog Day. And that's, that's what I was saying. Jake Busey comes, he fucking reaches in, grabs Grant Grandpa's heart and he fucking squeezes it. Oh, a fucking no. number appears on his head. Oh no, not Grandpa! <laughs> and Michael J. Fox is in the back seat, like yeah. Well, obviously, frighteners, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, they're stuck in the car. They can't get out of the car, which is kind of a stupid plot point that goes nowhere later. But whatever. Um, because yeah. they get out at the end, no problem. But well, they're like, we can't get out of the car. Help us, Mikey. Which is weird. Well, he says his legs are stuck. I don't. This sure. is this part. 
I'm talking. We're talking about a Moonbeam movie. I know. But, but, that's why but, I'm not trying to no, 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 pick no. it too hard but here. But to contend, to contend that what I'm saying is like most of this movie's put together like pretty solid. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. But like this one, it starts to get dodgy it, because like they're trapped in the car upside down. And then, like, Mikey comes, and he's like, Dad! He's, like, trying to pull him out. And then fucking Vinvara shows up with his fucking oh, Legion of Doom behind him. <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. The his... fucking fog rolls in. Yeah. And the leprechauns show up, and they're like, Oh, we can't, we can't do nothing about it, Mikey boy. You have to believe. Your father has to believe. Well, hold his hand. Hold tight, Mikey. He, he finally does. He he, 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 he apologizes. He says he's not going to do Ireland land. Say it. Say it. Yeah. He's like, say it, God damn it. I, I believe. And he they appear. Before him, and then they they basically go, and the king is like, Vinvara, you have no, he has apologized, he believes now, he takes it all back. Because <laughs> the whole thing is like, they're there to get him because he's right. such a shithead, the yeah. grandpa, basically. So they, uh, the, the, the king- And, and of- I promised to leave Fairyland to the faithful guy, I swear to God. Oh, right, well, that was because the other it, thing. It's also Vinvara- The god of them, basically. The- right, right, but it's also Vinvara's domain, too. Right. Like, he's part of it. Like, exactly. it's part of the- <laughs> the magical ecosystem. Uh, well, yeah, because even earlier in the movie, they say like, "Oh, if we go to America, like Vinvar doesn't need to know about it. Whatever it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hurt him if he doesn't know about it, kind of thing." Because they're scared of him. So he turns back into his fucking hexus uh, smoke cloud from Fern Gully, and he fucking <laughs> goes away because the power of love has prevailed. Uh, yeah, once the, again, the power of love allows them to easily get out of the car now. But yes, their again, legs are okay. unstuck. They pull him out. Sure, mom pulls up. She's got the fucking milk. She just pours it right on John's head. It's kind of great. He's like, oh, I'm going to smell like aged cheddar in about 10 minutes. Uh, but now uh, they can all see them. Dad's no longer curmudgeon. That's all it took was to just get into a car accident. Uh, yeah, almost and die. Almost get fucking cleaved in half by a side, wielded by a skeleton man. Uh, thank God he wasn't facing off against Clint Howard from Evil Speak because there's oh, no man. way he would have survived no, that. No, no, no. Well, everybody would have ate it that day. True. Decapitations for everyone. And now we're just like in Ireland at the end here. And I guess John's taking over the family fucking business, which is pretty awesome. Like they all move to Ireland and you're living on this beautiful piece of property in this giant fucking castle, hanging out with leprechauns, doing magic and shit. Yeah. Smoking a pipe. And fucking uh, 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 eating mutton and shit. And they definitely got some purple Urkel. I think the leprechauns get their hands on that easy enough. Sign me up. Uh, yeah, get getting blazed with some fucking leprechauns. And, you know, of course, again, P heads there. Lubden's got to be showing up. You know, Frodo, Bilbo, the whole gang are coming over for a little hash. Oh, oh, they got the the bomb. Yeah, we got we got every version of the of the wizards. We got the MDU wizards. We got the real wizards. Even the blue ones from the book show up that I can't name. <laughs> the L- Lubden's fucking ripping that bomb. <laughs> They're handing it around. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ice T even makes an appearance. Fuck it. <laughs> Uh, it, it's a grand old time. It's like the end of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> the whole MDU's so the there blazing at the, at the fairy hill. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Dobby's dancing while, while, uh, Haggerty shoots at his feet. It, it's a grand old time. It's, it's cool. And like, but the thing is like Grant Kramer, like you said, is like now completely, uh, he's, he's in his Irish outfit. He's completely, <laughs> em- he's in his fucking dino putt outfit and he's completely, um, embracing his heritage his heritage yeah. so he now he's the tour guide yeah and he's like doing a terrible irish accent yeah. he's like oh come on i mean worse than mine for christ's sake but he's like oh come come here we're gonna check on the leprechaun look down the fucking hole there just just not too deep we don't want another incident where someone heard norm fucking uh fucking fucking uh, uh, it's an irish thing i don't Give know fucking lumen feck me fecketh me I don't I know. Guess. Anyway, second arsehole. He, uh, yeah, he literally word for word just about quotes what his dad says at the beginning. Yeah, it's like the same. Well, he's given the same tour. Yeah. So before it wraps up, so, so so Grant Kramer is there now. Yeah. Now he had these big plan- plans for for Ireland for land. Ireland land. Why isn't he just employing building upon this? Like, why not make it mm, like part of the attraction is Fairy Hill? No, no, no. yes, but it's already an attraction. Is oh, my yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So why not just set up a fucking gift shop in the <laughs> castle and then do like a castle tour? Like. Ah. There you go, man. There's your extra ducats. Get, get your uh, alligator esque uh, uh, vendors. People watch them shake. Watch them giggle. Leprechauns bring you home. It'll be great. Or something. Uh, make a giggle. They got leprechaun fake tits and stuff. Oh, I don't know. Wait, what? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where my brain went there immediately. I don't know. Mardi Gras or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> not even an Irish holiday. I don't know. No. Anymore. But yeah, it kind of wraps up there, and we can assume Mikey eventually takes over, unless he's again adopted and by the small soldiers family. Maybe, maybe something terrible happens between now and then. I'm not sure. I don't know. It might because we got to see what happens in Spellbreaker. 
the secret of the oh. leprechauns. The, the, the final piece to the puzzle. Maybe this will be like a Munchy uh, Returns kind of situation, which we're, we're going to get to at some point this year, I think. Oh, yeah, big time. Where where we get that that final piece of the puzzle we didn't know we needed. <laughs> we we learned a little bit about it on that Munchy episode, but th- th- that's another one I feel like you had the full story when you get that movie oh, in there. Oh, I yeah. cannot wait to do it. So where are we putting this movie? This is, weirdly enough, on the shelf. I'm, 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 I'm kind of surprised to even say it. Um, we, we've covered quite a few kids movies or, or family films, however you want to define this film. It's a, uh, it's a kids movie. Uh, family. in the past, yeah. I mean, Unlucky Leprechaun, I forget what I said in that episode. It definitely tickled the funny bone, but it, it kind of sucked. This one really, uh, kept me engaged throughout. This was a movie as a, as a 33 year old man <laughs> or however fucking old I am at this point. I think that sounds about right. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, it's it's yeah. all that telemore dude, Joe. You were hitting too much of the Morton uh, Dew there, yeah. Shawnee boy. I was. I was hitting it too hard. A little bit too much of the uh, the, the snake bite. The old and, snake bite. Yeah, yeah. Let's call it that. <laughs> the Irish snake bite. Um, don't know where I was going with that, but my point is, this is a lot of fun. Uh, oh, unlucky leprechaun. It was boring to me, but it was it, it was memorable for reasons that I go into in that episode. This one just it held my attention. Uh, again, for a kids movie, that's hard for me to do unless it's like some of like the classic Disney films. Sure. Uh, so right off the bat, it's like a success, and uh, I I would weirdly enough watch this again. I mean, it's not like I'm throwing it on yearly like you. Like it's not what I'm gonna constantly return to, but I, I would put this on. It's fun. It's it's weird. It's not offensive. Uh, it's got a good message at the end, and I mean, we're kind of joking about some of the heritage stuff, and that's more so an in joke on the luck of the Irish, to be fair. Sure. But I mean, I, Grant Kramer has lost his way. Yes, in this yes. <laughs> the, the the MDU implications between this and Keller Clowns are also kind of fun to connect. Um, it's also shot really well. I mean, Ted Nicolau, obviously, we talked about that earlier, has done some really good movies. So that's no surprise. And it kind of like floored me, to be honest, when I saw he directed this um, and, and the sequel, which now, again, we're going to have to cover. Um, definitely check this one out. It is on YouTube. I mean, if you can find a, a copy, like Joe's got his VHS, I don't know if there's a DVD available or if a Blu-ray is ever in the works, like I'll, I'll buy it. it I, I, don't, I don't know I don't, though. I don't know if it's on DVD. They did, re- you know, they have released some Moonbeam stuff, but I don't sure. know if Leaping Leprechauns is. It might, it might even be on that, uh, the, the full moon, uh, it might be on, streaming. It might be on full moon streaming. It might be on Tubi. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's out there for your viewing pleasure. So definitely check it out if you haven't. It's on, yeah, it's on YouTube. Uh, it's Both a fucking trip. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, it's on the shelf and it's up there lovingly next to a few of these other Leprechaun films. Not four. Well, four's in the dumpster, even though I, I'm not crazy about it. It's worth the watch. That's one maybe I would watch yearly. Oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, definitely check this one out. Oh yeah, this is on the shelf big time, man. Um, I, I, didn't realize how much I'd be into this. Now, this mm. is like right in the pocket of I mentioned earlier of the Moonbeam films being very uh having a low budget but being very well made. Yeah. So like that Dragon World is another good one. Pet Shop's another one. They have like animatronics and stuff and and uh, a giant fucking dragon and stop motion in the mm. Dragon World. But Leaving Leprechaun does great stuff. Now, again, I mentioned Josh Kirby before, so we're doing a lot of like the Force Perspective stuff and a lot of um the forced perspective is great. Yeah, and and the 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 sets, the scaled up sets for the regular size people. And it all looks really good. There's I don't think there's really any dodgy effects in this where I'm like that looked like shit. No. Even the green it's consistent. Screen, even the green screen is good for the little bit that it is. Um it's nice to see them on sets like people on big sets, like like oversized sets. It just looks great. It always does and it's fun. Um yeah, it, it's written really well, and it. I think it's one of the. I think it's one of the better Moonbeam movies, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's it's fun to see Grant Kramer in something besides uh, Killer Clowns. Yeah, and, and I think he, you know, or or New Year's Evil or something because he's in that. Oh, um, yeah, but uh, it's fun seeing him here, and the kid from Small Soldiers is great, and the guy who plays um, Michael Denny, he is is really good. Yeah. Um, the, the two leprechauns, Flynn and Patrick, are fucking funny as hell. I think all the leprechauns are funny. Even yeah, King queen, Kevin. The queen's good, too. The queen's funny, too, yeah. Um, I think I, I would add that to my uh, to my list of movies that I that I tackle each year. Uh, so, the list is getting so, long, So we're going we're gonna to take this boy, and we're going to put it right on that stack, and we're going to watch, maybe with the exception of Leprechaun in the Hood, we're going to watch all these <laughs> uh, for, for, for St. Patrick's Day. Um. With a little uh, Irish soda bread, with a little Irish of my soda bread, courtesy of, of Mario Rourke. There, um, 
yeah shelf 100 check it out if you can find it i like sean said it's on youtube uh, it's <laughs> it's a good time it's fun uh, and apparently so is the sequel Espe- uh, especially if you got kids yeah. like this is like prime uh you know us growing up or like some of you even watching the moonbeam movies show it to your kids it's a lot of fun or if you just like want like again like we're talking about and suggesting it because we're covering it for this show but also it's just it's kind of something fun to put on in the background yeah. and just like if, if you don't want anything like serious, just something to kick up the feet, have one of these beers oh, or, yeah, big or time. you know, the old bowl boy or whatever, <laughs> whatever floats your boat. Maybe you just have a bag of chips. I don't know what works for popcorn. Even it's also get, to get some green salt on the popcorn. <laughs> it's also re- pretty respectful to the Irish culture. Yeah. There's nobody drinking beers. There's nobody. Yeah. There's nobody eating potato chips or any potato talk whatsoever. Which luck of the Irish is full. It's full of that. Uh, Disney's yeah. like, oh, you want some potatoes? Here you go. The, the most is, and, and they don't even really say it's actually whiskey, no. but you know, we're kind of no. joking. They say the morning dew is the most you might get. With yeah, the but, implication. but grandpa's not drinking in this. And there's, and the, the folklore that they go into yeah. for like Vinvara and the Puka and the Banshee and all that stuff and the leprechauns and the Fae folk and how they operate and all of that is really well done yeah and it honestly like it makes me like this film like not to keep referencing luck luck of the irish but like that was a movie that made me like think about wow this is the way you don't go about you know uh uh remembering your heritage this movie is the the polar opposite this actually made me be like man i i kind of want to now like go back like it i I don't know if literally this is the movie to motivate me but it definitely is pushing me in a direction where i'm like maybe i will get one of those books maybe i will like actually read about this i should you should yeah it's very interesting and especially folklore like i'm a big i'm a big folklore guy and uh island's got some great folklore for yes. sure so don't forget over on patreon we do have that rawhead rex watch along which again it is a live watch along uh where we are in the chat chat with you guys watching the movie uh, again, five and ten dollar tiers, and we have a ton of old ones. If you want to go back down the list, if you've never checked them out before, uh, over at Patreon.com/slash Movie Dumpster. But get ready for this Irish Morgus board. Oh yeah, it, it's this Sunday, baby, yes. the twentieth. Yes, as of this uh, release, so yeah, uh, it's in two days. Check that out. We're gonna be there with possibly some more soda bread, some, some more, more soda bites. bread, some more booze. We're gonna kick it with y'all. So make sure you're there. And we also got that Leprechaun commentary yes, track. Yes, yes, kicking up comment. too. Also on Patreon. Yeah, that'll be that'll be next week. I think I believe we're releasing it in the middle of next week. So so, so you got you got your full uh uh Irish fill for this year. Yeah, so you save, save your uh, leprechaun viewing for that commentary track, <laughs> wink yeah. wink. You know, get you know double whammy on that one, maybe. We know some of you bought that uh, leprechaun set, so save that first movie yeah. for us because we got that commentary it's a good track. Set, coming. Actually, I think that's one I got at home. Oh, the yeah. Blu-ray set, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're gonna close this out. We're gonna have a little bit more Miss Mary Soda Bread. Thanks, Mom. Uh, cheers, Mike. Aaron go bra, Joe. Oh, that I that wasn't Irish at all. I think it's an Irish saying. Mmm, mm, yum. Mm-mm. So that's it. That's Leap and Leprechauns from 1994, directed by Ted Nicolau. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. <laughs>